Hi everyone and welcome back to 80 Passione. It's 11.30 p.m. in Paris, day 10 at Roland Garros and Stefano Tsitsipas has just won his quarter-final against Daniel Medvedev after two hours and 19 minutes. But let's go and listen to what Stefano has to say on court just at the end of the match. Stefano, well done. What a performance tonight. It was so intense, especially the second and third set. Yes, you know, I was playing against uh, one of the best guys on the tour and it was... Uh, I had to keep up with intensity and, uh, and elevate my game um, during the entire match. I felt like um, I was playing really good, giving him, you know, not, not that much space to do uh, things. And I think my uh, performance was uh, close to, uh, actually, one of the best uh, this week, I would say. Really happy with that. You know, um, here on play um, in Paris brings back good memories, and I'm happy to uh, keep repeating and uh, you know, going, trying to go further uh, day by day. So now that uh, the uh, interviewer is just uh, translating in uh, French to, to the crowd that actually is not there, so it was uh, such a shame that this uh, uh, match was played on the Philippe Chatrier during a night session uh, without the crowd. Fortunately, tomorrow the crowd will be there during the other uh, quarter final between uh, Nova Djokovic and uh, Matteo Berrettini. But I totally agree with uh, Stefano Tsitsipas, who today played. Uh, almost a perfect match. He was very cynical, solid from the beginning, and mentally he didn't suffer Daniel Medvedev like he did before. Uh, just looking at the head-to-head, -head, it was a 6-1 in favor of the Russian player. Uh, he started really on fire. Uh, he got one break in the first set in the fourth game and that was enough basically to secure the opening set with a score of 6-3 after 30 uh, minutes. In the second set, uh, Medvedev started a little bit more uh, to become more aggressive, uh, to try, you know, to... Um, use more uh, shots, more uh, variation, in particular he was uh, using a very uh, good uh, drop shot, uh, but um, even if Tsitsipas got an early uh, break to uh, Love in the third game, and so he was leading in terms of score 2-1, uh, uh, after Medvedev uh, was good enough in the sixth game basically to level the score on three all, taking the break back. Uh, at that point, I have to say that the level of uh, the entire match was uh, raising. Both players were, were producing incredible uh, shots. Um, in particular, the ninth game was uh, eight minutes long. Um, and uh, Medvedev, you know, he was probably um, getting more uh, confident. Uh, we all know that there is a history between uh, them. Um, and uh, um, in, in the second, probably we saw that kind of a battle royale that we were expecting from the uh, beginning. Um, but at that point, uh, after there was an unbelievable uh, twinner of uh, Medvedev, uh, uh, as you know, on game point in the 11th uh, game, uh, and uh, probably uh, the best way to uh, finish the second set was, you know, through a tie break. In the tie break, uh, Stefano Tsitsipas proved once again uh, this new very... Um, cold and focused style, uh, like he said during the press interview, uh, probably when I don't think too much, when I feel completely focused on my game is when I'm uh, uh, producing uh, uh, the best tennis. And I have to say in the tie break, he was absolutely perfect on serve. Um, he was uh, uh, very, very uh, aggressive. He went immediately uh, three love uh, up after uh, Medvedev with the two powerful uh, uh, first serve uh, kind of uh, um, went, you know, on uh, um, three two. But after still, uh, Tsitsipas uh, never gave the impression of uh, giving up. He was always in control of the rally. And after he won the tie break with the score of a seven three with a winner. 
So the second set uh, took 51 minutes. Tsitsipas seemed completely in control of the match. Also, they were showing uh, some statistics uh, that in his uh, career, Medvedev never uh, came back from uh, two sets to love down. Uh, the third set started with the Tsitsipas on serve, um, who saved basically a break point in the first, uh, in the third game of uh, uh, the set. Uh, in the fourth, instead, Medvedev managed to save uh, two uh, break points. And in the fifth, Medvedev was the one to break first uh, with a beautiful uh, drop shot uh, after he won the, the uh, next game to uh, Love. So the score was a 4 2 in favor of the Russian, who uh, basically completely changed his uh, outfit. If he started the match with a dark blue, after now he was wearing kind of a, a white uh, outfit. And uh, I have to say that probably. In the past, Tsitsipas would have lost this set, but he was keeping, you know, focus. He was really uh, trying not to give up, to uh, be uh, concentrate on his uh, game plan. And uh, this uh, um, probably patience and determination paid him back in the eighth game when Tsitsipas got the break back, a love game, and he leveled the score on four all. After Tsitsipas in the following game uh, um, won and uh, he was leading 5-4, so he forced uh, in the 10th game basically Medvedev to serve to stay in the match. Uh, something very up, uh, funny happened in that game. Uh, the camera basically moved and uh, made uh, some noise. So um, Medvedev started a little bit to argue with uh, the umpire. According to him, um, he uh, the serve, you know, the first serve uh, back. And at one point he said, you know, if I lose the match, it's your fault. I have to say the umpire was a uh, fantastic with uh, with a smile. He tried, you know, basically to to close all of these. Uh, um, funny uh, situation. Anyway, Medvedev managed to keep his uh, serve in that game, so the score went on level 5 all. and the following game Tsitsipas was once again super uh, cynical on his serve and he was leading 6-5. Uh, in the 12th um, uh, game, uh, it was a very uh, particular one because uh, Medvedev was a 40 love up but uh, Tsitsipas, uh, once again, was proving, you know, a lot of resilience. At this point, uh, Medvedev missed a couple of uh, drop shots and after uh, gave the first match point to uh, Tsitsipas due to an unforced error. And because Medvedev is uh, not a normal player, is quite unusual, quite uh, crazy, he decided on match point to serve an underarm uh, um, uh, but Tsitsipas was uh, fast enough uh, to run towards the, the, the ball and to hit uh, a winner with his uh, back end. So after two hours and 19 minutes, he could basically celebrate this very well the serve win. So he is going to reach uh, and is going to play on Friday his second consecutive semi final Roland Garros after the one that he lost last year against Nova Djokovic in uh, five sets. He's going to play against the German Alexander Zverev, who defeated earlier today on the Philippe Chatrier, the Spanish um, Fokina. Um, the match was quite one-sided. Uh, in the first set, I have to say, both players played very bad. Um, Zverev got four breaks uh, instead of uh, Fokina uh, three. Uh, and after, you know, this uh, first set where probably Alexander Zverev needed to uh, adjust a little bit his uh, uh, serve, he won very easily the second and the third with the same score of 6-1. So after one hour and 35 minutes, he could celebrate for him. It's already his third Grand Slam semi-final. He reached the semi-final Australian Open, US Open, and now here at Roland Garros. Uh, at the end of the match, during the uh, on-court interview to Marion Bartoli, who apparently is uh, uh, giving him a good uh, uh, luck, uh, he said that he thinks, you know, he played okay. Of course, uh, there is a lot of... Uh, um, he can improve uh, and he can probably, you know, raise his uh, uh, level uh, for the uh, semi-final. So let's see, for sure it's going to be quite interesting. Personally, I consider uh, uh, Stefano Tsitsipas so far the favorite, but um, 
you know, who knows, tennis, it's a very, very strange uh, sport. So regarding uh, to the other uh, results of the uh, day, uh, they played basically the uh, women's uh, quarterfinals, uh, bottom uh, half, the Slovenian Tamara uh, Sidankek, Uh, won in three sets against the Spanish Badosa. It was a very intense, very entertaining match, two and a half hours. Uh, the Slovenian player was leading one set up, won the first set 7-5. She was also 4-2 in the second, but after Badosa, probably who just realized I have nothing to lose, started you know, to uh, hit very strong from both wings. So she won the second set with the score of 6-4. In the third, she was one break up to love. But after uh, the Slovenian, you know, the number, uh, the world number 85 in the world uh, kept, you know, uh, cool uh, focus and she won in the third set with the score of 8-6. So definitely was a superb match and superb was as well the other quarterfinal between the Russian Anastasia Pavlichenkova, who already defeated uh, two Bulgarians in the previous rounds before uh, Sabalenka after uh, Azarenka. She won in three sets. This time, uh, coming back from uh, one set down, uh, she lost, you know, the first one at the tie break against uh, uh, Ribakina, uh, the player who defeated in the previous round uh, in two straight sets, uh, Serena Williams. So she uh, won in a very convincing uh, style the second set with a score of 6-2 uh, and after the third, 9-7. Uh, For her, it's the first uh, uh, semi-final uh, Grand Slam after that she played basically six uh, Uh, quarter finals so well done to the number 31 in the world they are going to play their uh, semi-final on Thursday looking at the order uh, uh, of play of tomorrow we're gonna start at 11 a.m local time in Paris with Coco Gaff against uh, uh, Krejcikova the Czech player who defeated Svitolina in the previous round mm, followed by Sakari, another uh, Greek uh, player Uh, who reached, you know, for the first time in the history, uh, um, quarterfinal and a Grand Slam against uh, the defending champion Iga Svontek, uh, who Iga as well uh, today won in uh, the double or uh, quarterfinal, so never stopping uh, winning and never stop uh, smiling for uh, Iga. Um, at the end of this match, uh, the um, uh, defending uh, champion for the men, Rafael Nadal, we play on the Philippe Chatrier against the Argentinian Diego Schwarzman. And in the evening, 8 p.m. local time, so one hour earlier than the usual night session, the world number one, Novak Djokovic against Matteo Berrettini. Fortunately, tomorrow in the night session, the crowd will be there. Uh, to witness and to cheer, you know, these uh, two athletes. It was a very intense day. It's almost day 11 Roland Garros. Stay tuned here on Ottanta Passione. Don't forget to subscribe. See you tomorrow. Ciao!